Hi, I'm Noah Weisberg. And I'm Sydney Osmar. Welcome to Holland Estates. You are listening to episode number 579. How are you, Sydney? I'm good. How are you? Doing well, thank you. So today we thought we would talk about a recent decision from the Ontario Superior Court of Justice in regards to dependent support. And just so our viewers are aware, the case is Webb and Bellway, and it can be found on Canley, uh, 2019 ONSC 4602. So, Sydney, we discussed that. We would first go over the facts briefly, and there were kind of two points we kind of wanted to hit home as to why we thought this case was interesting. So, just from a high level viewpoint, dependent support is one of the few instances in Ontario where testamentary freedom is curtailed. Uh, People often think that I leave a will, I can do what I want and leave my assets to whom I want. That's not always the case. The idea is if you have dependents and you haven't provided adequate support, the the court will intervene and and order an amount that they think is reasonable. So it is a two-part test for dependent support. It's found under part five of the Succession Law Reform Act. The first part of the test, which the court has to answer, is whether the person is actually dependent or not. And we're not going to go into too much detail on this point because both parties conceded that the applicant, who happens to be the common law spouse of the deceased, uh, was considered a, a spouse for the purposes of a dependent support application. So the court was satisfied that the applicant, they are dependent. And the second question the court then has to ask is, were they provided with, with adequate support? And if not, how much should the court order? So let's kind of dovetail into that second part of the test for dependent support. And I think it would be helpful just for our viewers to have a quick understanding of the relationship the applicant, who I already alluded mm-hmm. to, was the common law spouse of the deceased, um, had with the deceased, and who are the other interested parties? All right, I'll, um, I'll speak to that. And this case was interesting because it was actually an intestacy and the common law spouse who was conceded as a dependent, the court had to look to her actions throughout the deceased lifetime leading up to his death and whether or not funds that she had actually misappropriated from the deceased using a power of attorney of property actually was sufficient funds from the estate to make provision for her future care and needs. Right, so that's where the court looked at section 62, right? So the court basically, everyone agreed that the estate was worth about $2.8 million and the dependent, the the, the common law spell Mm -hmm. for the dependent, she basically sought half from the estate. Uh, that was opposed by the daughter mm-hmm. of the deceased, who on an intestacy would have gotten her, the, the, the remainder of the entirety of the estate for that matter. So what the court did, and you kind of dovetailed into it, was they look at section 62. Section 62 provides a list of factors which the court is going to consider in determining what the quantum of support should be. They also refer to a very famous decision from the Ontario Court of Appeal in, in Cummings, which says you have to look at moral support as well. So the court is looking through all these factors, they're kind of going through, you know, what should be the quantum, and the court stumbles upon stuff that the uh, dependent, sorry, that the uh, dependent common law spouse did as attorney. And so you were saying that she took all this yes. money. What did she actually do? So she actually, there were two things, that, um, two pieces to her questionable behavior that the court had to look at. First, she u- using an attorney for property, which was granted to her in about 2016, and the deceased had suffered a stroke in 2017, and then his mental capacity and health really declined after that point. And from the point of the stroke onwards, she ended up actually using the POA to transfer around $570,000 to herself. And she also then prevented family members from being able to visit the deceased when he was in hospital. During this time, she was also providing care to the deceased and taking other steps that the court looked at that kind of almost counteracted some of the misbehaviors. The daughter, who would have inherited on intestacy, her position was that what the applicant had already taken from the deceased should have been sufficient to meet her future expenses and needs as a dependent. Right. So the court kind of focused in on exception 62, sub 1, sub R, where there's additional factors the court looks at where the dependent is a spouse. And the idea is that if, if the conduct was so unconscionable, uh, as to constitute an obvious and gross repudiation of the relationship uh, to basis to limit the quantum. So that's basically what the uh, state trustee, the daughter, relied upon. The court said 
even though this lady took funds as power of attorney when she probably shouldn't have, and even though she, she limited contact with the daughter during the deceased final days, they still nonetheless awarded her quantum in addition to what she'd already received from the estate. So they let her keep the money she, she I would say pre-took as attorney. They gave her ownership in a farm and some additional cash as well, right? So that was like a, a great illustration of the court diving specifically into uh, section 62, sub one, sub R, the factor as to determining quantum. Just on a conclusory note, one of the things the court looked at was both parties had filed uh, actuarial um, expert opinion, where they looked at the present value of what a, of what a costs um, would be, I'm just finding a specific spot. Yeah, it was a present value of future living expenses, and they both obtained expert opinions, and they both uh, filed those with the court. So we tend to see that more and more now in Penn's court applications, where people are going out and getting these expert opinions. So those are the two kind of interesting thoughts mm -hmm. you want to take away from the case. Uh, I believe that concludes our podcast. Until next time, we want to thank you for listening. I am Noah Weisberg. And I'm Sydney Osmar. If you have any questions, please email us at webmaster at or leave a comment on our blog.